we witnessed the terrible incident of George Floyd on TV and just the horror of that moment. And it was absolutely heart-wrenching. I called Mark and I said, we have to do something. I had this idea and it was, it was kind of one of those kind of thunderclap moments and, or, or maybe a, a Holy Spirit moment, I would, I would think. He proposed an idea that he had using the last words of George Floyd. Mark mentioned a quilt. Well, I come from a long line of quilters and it just spoke to me that this was something that we could do. I, I sent the proposal out to different churches in New Hampshire, and nine churches returned uh, to me with, uh, with some interest. I got a letter from a guy I didn't never, I didn't know. I'd only seen his name a couple times, but I had no idea who he was, this guy named Mark Koyama. And it was asking for the endorsement of the Racial Justice Mission Group for this idea he had. And I looked at it and I thought, mm, that's interesting, I'm a quilter, but how are you going to do this? I mean, I had my doubts, right? What are you doing? I don't, how are you going to do this, right? But I thought, why not? We really needed not, not only to make these quilts, but to, to make them available to people and to, to bring them uh, to different churches and to different venues and to use them as a tool uh, for anti-racism work because they are indeed a powerful tool for that. Um, and so at that point, we sh it shifted from being a project to being a ministry. Through our anti-racism network and the Heartland Conference, we've been really fashioning a pilgrimage of these quilts and of the people who see them. So I am so glad that you're here for the encounter, not only with the quilts, but with the panel who will be sharing and giving us insight around this work in the, in the Akron area. I am brand new as the pastor here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ, but I can tell you uh, that you don't have to be at this church long to realize that, first of all, they have a tremendous commitment to justice. It was also very quickly that I learned that this church during the mid-19th century was, in fact, a stop on the Underground Railroad. That was a big part of the decision to host um, the Sacred Ally Quilt Ministry here at Pilgrim. Pilgrim United Church of Christ sits about 100 yards from the Cuyahoga River. And so here inside this doorway is a small hole that you can see the tunnel that goes under. So stop, it was a stop along the Underground Railroad where runaway slaves could then hide here and then get to the river without being recognized. Once it was determined that the quilt ministry was going to pass through Ohio, uh, the artists who created these quilts came together and made a decision that they were going to add an 11th quilt. So even when you watch the documentary, um, they will refer to 10 quilts. We in fact have 11 quilts in the room today. And that 11th quilt, the one that I am standing next to, is in honor and memory of Jalen Walker, who was gunned down by police here in Akron. Here in Cuyahoga Falls, I was invited to moderate a panel discussion because of my involvement in the Akron area, specifically related to building relationships um, across racial lines in the city so that we could collaborate and work together to bring constructive change and uh, establish a police oversight board. I know that the police union has a lot of power, so we can talk about legislation and changing things, but if it ultimately comes down to a culture where the police union is in control, we as citizens don't have any ability to make a change there. So We have to teach our officers, we have to reprogram them. Get safety, get cover. Why kill that human being? Because mm. you have the power to do something. Um, so that's where my hope comes from, is this room. Um, inside of this church that's sitting on top of an underground railroad in a place that if I come here, I get arrested immediately. That's the history of this place. 30 years ago, we was protesting low-income housing here. But I'm here in the church on top of an underground railroad. I have hope. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And so we have two of the quilters who, with their own hands, created these quilts who are with us. First, Dr. Harriet Ward. Harriet, wave your hand so they can see you. Harriet did three of the quilts, yes. and then uh, Reverend Mark uh, Koyama. Mark stands on the scene. And both of them have come to us today from New Hampshire. Okay, so I think now I'm going to ask Mike to prepare the documentary for us. The documentary was so moving. Uh, it helped to uh, bring to life uh, again the, the, the tragedy uh, of George Floyd's death, number one. Uh, it also helped us to, all of us there, to see these quilts in a different way because we are able to get to know the people who poured their hearts and their spirits into each one of the quilts. I think that these words were probably spoken in Ghana in 1619. These are George Floyd's words, but I'm sure that when our ancestors were being dragged out of Ghana by the Portuguese and the Dutch, they were screaming, please, please, mama, don't, you know, they were saying the same thing, they couldn't breathe, they were terrified. And these are the same words. I'm sure of it. Somebody said those words in 1619. This is a big problem if we're still screaming the same words. So we are uh, deeply aware of uh, the continued problem. Um, and we are, and we think, we believe that this is a, this is a, a very powerful spiritual model for, for, for uh, responding to the problem and, and, and finding, finding a way to to raise awareness and also to create conversation around this subject. Right. Particularly as an African-American man, I have experienced uh, brutality at the hands of white police. So this is not an unfamiliar experience for me. It is my life. It has been my life journey from my teenage years through my adult years. So it's more real for me and I'm sure for any African-American who uh, views these quilts. This morning we were here to honor and recognize the quilts made um, in memory of George Floyd. Uh, and this afternoon we're honoring the um, upcoming ministry of the Reverend Karen Georgia Thompson by building a watercolor quilt uh, in her honor. She placed the um, square here in the middle and uh, conference ministers and the United Church board members have added squares of fabric. The whole idea was like surrounding her with loving hands, you know, like laying out of hands around her ministry. I am a person that thinks the work that we do is in need of radical creativity and imagination. Um, and these quilts represent steps towards that um, and what that looks like between words and patterns and colors. Um, and this one specifically um, regarding words because it says, please somebody. And that's not specific. Um, it's, it's general, it's broad, somebody, you know? And when we call on somebody, we expect somebody to show up. The power of artist, naming the grief, the rage, the collective feeling of trauma is so powerful. Walking into the room today, these quotes are arresting. They remind you and they interrupt the monotony of the day to day to name. This is still happening in our world. And trying to create a new reality by honoring something so awful and catastrophic. It was how George Floyd stopped breathing that day. So to take the, the words of George Floyd, you know, I, I can't breathe, and put them with the words of the gospel, God who breathes life. And, and Dr. Ward said, 
If it breathes, it will speak. I think that's the invitation these quilts give to us as a denomination. Don't just talk about it from a performative place, but experience it. I mean, really in, in your bones. In collaboration with our Community Life Collaborative, we at Federated Church in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, have been honored to have this Sacred Ally Quilt Ministry and to have those quilts displayed here in our church. They're a remarkably powerful witness. I can't breathe, officer. Don't kill me. They're gonna kill me, man. Come on, man. I cannot breathe, I cannot breathe. You're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please, please, sir, please. I can't breathe. It's been a couple of years now. We have the dates. Almost three years. Since the world when we were still, had our attention rested, arrested by the murder of George Floyd, captured by the courageous action of a girl with the courage and the presence of mind and the awful resiliency we expect of black children to be able to take a man dying in front of her eyes for nine minutes. How long? Oh Lord. Holy breath, you who has breathed life into all life on this earth, we come before you shaken as the breath of George slowly ebbed as the breath of so many of our dear black, brown, and indigenous siblings seeps away in waves of hate, we feel the universe shake. It wounds our hearts. Convict us with your truth that black lives matter and inspire us to transform our country and the world into a place where this truth is made real. Let these quilts be signs and signals to our hearts, awakening our humanity, calling us into the work of justice, directing us along a path to the beloved community. Amen. It, it, these, this will stay with me, it, and uh, um, I didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but these words that he spoke just go right to, to my heart.